Hi, I'm Jamie. Welcome to Talking Sonics. I hope you're very well indeed. Well, in the early 1980s, things changed from transformer-based, large, hard copper wiring input mic preamps for recording and transformers gave way to the transistor, these micro ICs or integrated circuits, tiny chipset that could replace big heavy transformers, expensive transformers, was a bit of a revolution in the music uh, electronic industry. And of course, those that were making fantastic classic consoles, like this Children Behind Me or Neve, who were very well known for Class A design, they moved into ICs as well. And their first IC console was the 51 series featuring the very high performance NE5332 and 5334 integrated circuits, which were you know, used heavily, maybe four to eight of these inside one channel strip. A 32 channel console might have a hundred or more of these little guys in there, but the downfall of course of these high performance little chips was they drew quite a lot of current. Now I've got a note here that the NE5334 was a hungry little consuming IC drawing four milliamps. Now if we've got hundreds of all of these and for example a 32 channel Neve IC board, um, they could dissipate as much as 500 watts of heat energy now think about that in the middle of winter. You've got not only something very warm in your control room for winter, you know, 500 watts of heat really coming off the board. You could literally toast your hands over the thing. But the negative here was that amount of heat inside the board coming from the ICs was literally cooking the electrolytic capacitors on the board. Now you've probably heard, or if you know anything about old music equipment, consoles and so on, people talk about recapping. Now recapping just basically means replacing these electrolytic capacitors. Now for uh, a Neve console that was very expensive, they would usually end up in Australia, in, in TV, Channel 9 or Channel 7, ABC, major networks were buying these in the 80s to replace some of the older consoles. But it was not uncommon for channels to need to be recapped very quickly or the entire board within three to five years of use. And remember, these boards were on all the time, on air all the time, switched on all the time. That heat is dissipating all the time, really affecting the caps inside the board. Now, you might have a dream of finding an old Neve console like a 51 series, maybe in disrepair, or maybe if you've got a pile of cash anywhere from $60,000 and up, one that uh, has been recapped, you might be able to find one. There's not a lot of them around, maybe only a couple in Australia, and I know a few people that have got these. I did contact them for the idea of doing some A-B testing with a console like this Studio Master next to me but they were in such bad condition that they were decommissioned all in pieces and no one was using these things. So really from a maintenance perspective and cost perspective, an old Neve is a huge nightmare, particularly for the small home studio. Now, is there an alternative? Well, yes, I think there can be. Something that sounds rich and warm and uses different ICs. Now I've got next to me a Studio Master 16 into 4 desk. This was developed in 1978, released to the market in 79 and the 80s, and it uses a similar high performance IC to the NE334, which is a UA741CP op amp. But the difference here is that the op amps in this little desk dissipate much less heat. And combined, I think I counted about 72 ICs in this desk and it dissipates around 35 watts. So if you think about much less heat going on inside here, well, those electrolytic capacitors are not having much of a hard time at all, are they? Do they need to be recapping? Well, I've had a look inside this guy and even though it's old, 
it looks in pristine first class condition, which is fantastic. It also sounds great. Now, before you start yelling at me saying, no, Jamie, that is not a Neve desk. It won't be anything like a Neve desk. I will say this. No, it's not a Neve desk. It's never going to be a Neve desk. These things, you can probably pick them up for around $1,500 to two grand, somewhere in that vicinity, if they're in pristine working condition. If they're scratched, broken, in disrepair, probably much less. Now, this guy doesn't have the headroom of a Neve desk. It doesn't have transformer inputs, but what it does have, it has in spades, and that's character. It also has incredibly sweet, warm EQs, and look, it's got sweepable high frequencies. It's got sweepable lows. It's got fantastic shelving highs and lots of sends. It's very versatile. We've got uh, two sends, a fallback send, a lot of bussing capabilities going on here. Lots of switching capabilities, so it's really fun and a great disc to route for home recording. Fantastic EQ, and this is really why I love this thing. I mean, silky, silky, airy top end. Uh, the low end will go um, all the way down below 30 hertz, so you can certainly boost some subsonics. They're very high bandwidth channels. And I've just done a comparison with the Class A children behind me with this microphone plugged in to this guy and wow it sounds great so what I'm going to do next for you is let's really have an AB test so I'm going to say into this microphone testing testing one two three this is the Chilton QM3 okay so now I'm in the Studio Master this is the Studio Master test test one two three Studio Master flat no EQ previously was the Chilton flat with no EQ so very similar with this old Sennheiser lovely microphone into a great preamp let's have a little closer look now at the EQ section okay I've got the Sennheiser in my hand now and I'm going to just boost that top end that's a 10 to 12 hey 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 very very airy and that's what I mean the shelving really is going up to around 16 K. Hey, 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 check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Our mids, I can boost, 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 or uh, pulling out some high mids. This is boosting around 400 hertz, 400, sweeping through to a 1K boost there, 7K boost there. Lovely airy stuff. I could pull out, say, 4K there and boost some high. They really might be great for an overhead. I'm just going to flatten that again, maybe add the air there. Bottom end. 300 hertz there, 300, 200, 100. So quite, getting quite thick. And we go down to 40 hertz there. So flat. Boom, one, two, check, one, two. Hey, 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 hey. So very warm. If I was working on a snare drum, I might push some top end, some 4K byte, 100 hertz there, like that. So as you can see, a very, very manageable and sweet sounding EQ section there. So what did you think of the Studio Master 16 into 4 console? A really fantastic workable little desk lightweight sounds beautiful those eqs next step for this guy is to really put it through its paces i'm going to get my band in here we're going to record a classic song you might know this one and really see what it can do on drums bass synthesizer guitars put everything record everything through this guy and produce a track and you can be the judge in terms of Really, does this have that early 80s sound? Does it have the richness, the fullness, similar to Neve? Is this little IC console a gem? I think it is, but you be the judge. Check it out in the following video. Thanks for joining me on Talking Sonics. I hope to see you soon.